What's happening, everyone? Uh, we are here to talk about the finale episode of season one, Yasawa Islands. And I'm joined by my co host, McKenna Feeney, as always. And the great Robbie is here. He's fantastic this season. Can't wait to hear the insight on the finale and the epic final vote and our winner. Robbie, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And I think we know who McKenna's favorite is because we start the episode with Austin once again. I think he's got to break some sort of record with uh, starting the episodes with a confessional. <laughs> I don't know. What, I don't know what the deal is there. Great, he gives great confessionals. Also, like we didn't plan ahead with, oh, we should, we need something to start the episode off with. So all the other, both Jeremy and Karen's confessionals are like, oh, so I just won this challenge or yeah, Karen won and I'm going to have to fight for my case. So I'm like, this is the, th that was literally the only couple seconds where it was ambiguous to who's going to win or yeah, who's going to be taken, all that. And in typical Austin fashion, he starts off with a big smile on his face. He's grateful for being there. He's happy for making it as far as he did. And he's wishing luck to everybody, mostly yep. to himself, but also to the other two. Exactly. And, uh, and we roll right into the wall sit immunity challenge. So yep. We start that off and it's pretty much as straightforward as it sounds. You do a wall sit, last person standing is the final immunity winner, bringing it to final two. So that answers the question that we had initially of, okay, is this going to be a final two or is this going to be a final three? Because nobody ever said final immunity challenge in the previous episode. So that answers the question. So they all set up, um, you know, we see a, a little bit different uh, technique used a little bit in the setup for uh, Austin and Jeremy are more of a sharper 90 degree than Karen uh, <laughs> when it starts. Right. And So and we'll address that because we, we have gotten a lot of feedback about that. We were just yeah. about to call it out. We, when both boys dropped, we have since asked both of them, hey, would you have lasted any longer if we even had Karen uh go 90 degrees and they were like no we were both done also i've seen karen last long in a 90 degree wall sit with no hands on knees so i know that for a fact karen would have had that challenge regardless of her angle oh yeah i i, I think yeah. it is i think i think it is what it is and you know I don't think anyone's uh, going to debate the fact that I think Karen would have destroyed them in that. Any, I think I think like 40, 40 seconds or something. I don't think it was 40 uh, seconds. It was like, less than that. I'm, trying, I'm trying to be generous. Yeah. So, I, well, I'm, I'm not going to be that <laughs> generous because as you know, I'm not with challenges. That yeah, was yeah. really bad. And uh, the I thing is she was going to win regardless whether she would have started out exactly the way that they did. Yeah. They, they didn't have a chance. And that's I mean, the way it goes. You got to go, go at least two minutes. You go at least two minutes to have a chance in a wall sit. People usually go three. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's insane. Some, some people nowadays, but 40, 30 or 40 seconds isn't going to cut it regardless, but let's get past that. That's the elephant in the room. We're done. Karen wins. Yep. So it's down to Karen because obviously David and Austin or not David bring Jeremy and Austin uh, vote for each other. Um, so it comes down to Karen's solo vote and mm -hmm. she has to decide, okay, who do I want to take to the end? And she gives each person a chance to, to kind of plead their case and you know what she comes out saying in her confessionals but also really just to each of their faces is i'm more concerned she's saying about who can make a good argument against me and who's more articulate in the end and who, who can really uh, express the value that they brought to the game and the moves that they made in a way that will resonate with the jury and jeremy does a good job at kind of dancing around it a little bit and kind of says like Austin had a good game. He played a quiet game, but that's not a bad thing for him, you know, and they talk about, I think they talked about how he went to rocks twice and convinced them or Karen just mentioned that on her own, yeah. but that's obviously bothering Karen a bit, how Austin had the social game to have people trust him enough and, and be loyal enough to him to go to rocks twice. And in the end, she chooses to, to bring Jeremy uh, to the mm -hmm. end. And um, I think in this pre-tribal uh, section, the scramble round. I think the only, the only thing that stood out to me as a negative for anybody, cause it was a whole loyalty fest, right? Everybody was trying to say how much they love each other and how great it was to work as a trio. Cause I think in their minds, they made it to the end as a trio yeah. and they made it to the final three. They did it success. Well, now it's final two. And Austin's entire pitch to Karen is really, I've been loyal to you the whole time. 
and I've never, I've never stabbed you in the back and I've had opportunities. And I feel like he could have went one step further to say, I had opportunities that Jeremy wanted to take and I talked him out of it. You know what I mean? Or some, something like that to kind of say like, I'm part of the reason why you're here. But the problem is the more he played the loyalty card, the more he was sounding like, I made moves too. I made moves to keep you here. I made moves not to do that. And it, it would have been nice to see him, Austin, attack Jeremy and say, here's why Jeremy's going to win. Well, here's my, why Jeremy's going to win. My and, thing for Austin, he has all the votes and Jeremy has none of the votes. So either you have the big argument of, I survived everything or yeah. I got no votes against. So <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a catch 22 with either of them. I don't know which one is better to take. Yeah. I no just wanted to see fight. fireworks, right? I wanted to see Austin say, listen, if you take Jeremy to the end, he is going to destroy you. I'm happy with second place. I know I'm going to lose, but if you bring him, then I hope you're happy with second place. Cause this guy is going to destroy both of us. I didn't see any fire like that. A lot of it was, I respect your decision. And you know, with some people, maybe this is Austin's read. Some people would actually say, okay, listen, this guy's being loyal to me. I want my game to be about that. Like a guy like Corey, right? I could see a guy like Corey saying, you know what? You're right, Austin. You were with me the whole time. I'm all about loyalty. If I win or lose, I'm taking it to the end. Let's do this, right? So Austin's argument might work with some people. I just wasn't sure if it was going to work with Karen and, and apparently uh, apparently it didn't. Um, well, you know. he was, you know, too worried about that Chipotle bowl that he had to finish. And yeah. So maybe he couldn't fully get together all of his thoughts that he wanted to. But it's it's really difficult to sell yourself in order to get into the final two and talk to that person that is indeed safe, because you don't want to say too much where you could be, be pitching that to the jury and to get yeah. them thinking, oh, really, can I take that person? So it's really something you have to maneuver around where you can't give too much information but you have to give just enough for them to take you and not the other person. I think it also credits Jeremy's survivor experience versus Austin's inexperience with survivor, because as we have found out, Austin has watched two episodes of survivor. <laughs> while Jeremy has seen 40 seasons. So Austin doesn't know as, as much to how to pitch himself or how to speak at a final tribal council. So yeah. that would be something I would think, okay, great. I've seen how a final tribal council works and he hasn't. Wouldn't that be something I'd want to take with me? So yeah. and Jeremy, in my opinion, I mean, granted, she still won either way, yeah. but I was shocked in the moment that Jeremy survived that vote. Yes. And as was I, but you know what? And, and I got to speak to Austin's, you know, kind of argument or, or lack thereof when it comes to being, you know, a, a, an aggressive argument It was more of, of a polite plea. Um, there are people, and I've been in this position myself, who at that point in the game, as silly as it sounds, you're honestly happy. You're like, listen, I, at this point, I played such a good game. If I go out, I'm proud of what I did. Mm -hmm. And I could see that in Austin, right? He said it for the last four episodes almost, how he's, he's happy he made it this far. And, and that's the truth, right? I mean, I played in, in a long game that was, you know, I, I went 38 days or something like that. And when I ended up going out in, I think, fourth, yeah, fourth, I... I was happy. I played such a, a, a game that I felt proud of that I didn't win. I got far, but I was happy about it. And I think Austin's kind of in the same boat where it is what it is. And I had fun. I think one of either his best thing or just my favorite thing that Austin like ever did in these scramble rounds was he would be talking strategy and then he'd see one person come in seamlessly be like, yeah, so like my armpits are like real sweaty, right? <laughs> yeah. It was my favorite thing. It was always seamless. So it didn't make it feel like they were intruding on a strategy conversation. And they're just like, so what you talking about? He just, yeah. his social skills in those scramble rounds were just re like fun character. Well, like and that like makes Austin a big difference. all around. That, that makes a big difference because I mean, if you have people coming into a room with you and they feel comfortable, they don't even think about it. But if they come into a room with you and you make them feel like you were just talking about them, even if you weren't, if you just go quiet, like, uh, reading their name, I don't know you. So, Hey, what's uh, going on? Like all of a sudden they read your name. And when they leave that room, they say, yeah, Austin just stopped talking when I went in there. Yeah. And even if you weren't on their mind, now you are. And so that, that's not negligible. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a, that's a pretty valuable skill to have. For sure. Yeah. But 
you know, Karen makes the decision, takes Jeremy to the end, and then we have ourselves a final tribal council where it ultimately comes down to a very, very close vote. Four to three? Yes. Sorry, I, I don't know why I had the math different in my No, it's head, fine, yeah. I was like, I was like five, four? Oh, wait, no, 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 four, three. <laughs> math is hard, Robbie, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, well, it's been a long season. I don't know, we're doing these, uh, quite, no, I'm, I'm having a blast. But um, yeah, so we get to the final tribal and before we get to the vote, I highlighted two questions that I thought kind of differentiated a little bit. I mean, I guess I could mention Corey's question where he asked, you know, when did the alliance get formed, that final three alliance and kind of who was in charge of forming that i would have loved to have had one of them either jeremy or karen even if they're lying at that point just say like i i wanted it to happen and i made them feel like it was their idea mm -hmm. and then if they came back the other person came back and said well it was my idea be like see <laughs> like you know what i mean yeah, like that just was something great. To, to own it um but you know what? It, i don't think that made a big difference in the end although you did hear a little bit about the the Corey wheel vote, you know, who, 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 who was in more uh, control on yeah, that I think one. They were both at equal. You can't, I don't think yeah. you can credit Karen that, with that move and not credit Jeremy with that move. Well, so, and I, I, I would love that to come up in the, uh, in the reunion when Annie gets a chance to sit in front of them or with them. I'm assuming you guys are going to do a reunion show at some point. Oh, don't you worry, Robbie. And, I'm ready for the and reunion. And I'm sure show. that's a question Jeremy has to ask. Cause like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Yeah. Like we both did it and you gave her the vote for that. Um, but you know what? The two questions I highlighted, um, the first one was Austin asked, who did you learn from in the game? And I think Karen had a perfect answer with that. And she said, Ryan and, and Ryan's there on the jury. And if you're going to, to brown nose or suck up to somebody on the jury, Ryan's not a bad one that boosts his ego a little bit with an answer that I learned from you. Uh, and that might help. You know what I mean? That might help. Um, whereas Jeremy goes with someone who wasn't even in the room. And even if it's the honest answer, I'm like, you got to pick somebody be like, you know what, Carlo, I, I, I didn't know you coming in, but just based on the, the charisma you had, you know, I took the, something, I don't know, just try to get a, a brownie points from somebody, uh, in, in the room. But once again, these are all nitpicky things right. and I'm only nitpicking cause it was a one vote tribal. Mm -hmm. Um, and the last one was, you know, what would have been different in your social game? Uh, or sorry, in your game, if you didn't have um, pre-existing relationships. And um, that was one that Ryan asked um, Jeremy. And Jeremy's was kind of like, I would have to have had a totally different game, which means he benefited a lot from that. Um, so I think that was kind of a weak answer, but a horrible answer was Karen's. And I think that was one of the worst answers I've ever seen <laughs> at a tribal council where somebody gives, you know, a finalist five or six chances to say just tell me a move where you were cutthroat anything anything tell just you know what like your whole argument in this entire final tribal has been that you trusted your gut and that you were cutthroat give me an example mm -hmm. and i feel like she's just such a i don't know like just a polite person maybe or she didn't want to sound like a villain but she just couldn't grab any of the lies or like the fact that she voted against Ryan and flipped against her entire alliance at the beginning and then lied about it for half of the season yeah. or you know like there's, there's something in there mm -hmm. and she looked really distracted during that final yeah. tribal council well, and, and, and to give Ryan credit I think Ryan went in wanting to vote for Karen he did and he, did. he gave Karen as many opportunities as he could and in the end you know she gave an answer but Jeremy looked really good at that point. And I'm like, man, Jeremy's got this in the bag because his tribal was spot on. I mean, he had a couple wobbly answers or whatever, but right. everything was concise. It was, it was well-worded, well-spoken and answered the questions directly. And I thought Jeremy went into that tribal losing and I thought he came out of that tribal winning. Yeah. And yeah. I think he delivered, he delivered yeah. on his final tribal council answers. I thought he owned it. He cool. was able to explain to everyone, these were my moves. This is what I did. I thought going out of it, he was a winner just exactly. based on final tribal council. I think and Karen, Karen started, and Jeremy, sorry, sorry, go ahead. When we started getting the, those votes and then the last one came up, Karen, I was, I was shocked. And I was shocked at some of the reasonings too. I was like, how are you giving Karen credit for a move that was both of theirs and that you can't clearly define 
yeah. that it's Karen's or Jeremy's. I just, I was yeah. shocked. I think the answer there is 13 hours or 12 hours. I yeah. think <laughs> these people have been yeah. playing forever. They, they probably heard half of what was said at tribal and they probably remember less of what happened during the game. And, and it's really the interpersonal connections that people had at that point. And that plays a big part in it. But um, yeah, I think, I think Karen and Jeremy played such a similar game, but because Jeremy was so well worded, I thought he took it home. And, and, I think the difference is Karen's alliance and people that she was working with more closely that she turned their back on and she stabbed them in the back to win, you know, Phil and Corey. I think, I think that's what ended up winning it for her was just that, that fluke of, you know, who she worked with and she killed them. Whereas Jeremy worked with them and his allies were at the end with him. And here's my last question for you though, Robbie, yep. do you think some of the votes that were for her, were based on what she did in previous games and not this game alone? I wouldn't say, that's a good question. And I'm glad you asked that. Um, I don't I, think Phil's was. I, for the fact that yeah. Jeremy led him on and Karen was direct saying, exactly. I'm voting you out. So, I don't so, think Phil's was. So I think I think that, I don't think any, uh, like, yeah, I think if somebody was going to vote for her just because uh, they wanted to vote for her, I think Ryan would have done it. Um, so I, like, when you look at how Ryan actually took her answer into account, you know, it was this game, the vote for him was this game, right. And that went to Jeremy. Um, but I think for Karen, I think the fact that she could speak to how she used to be and how she changed for this game impacted it. I think the, the underdog story that she built about how she's been kind of walked on a little bit in previous games and how she kind of trusted herself more and didn't let herself get walked on in this game. I think that helped. Um, I don't think you had to play those previous games because I didn't play those previous games. Well, I guess I did play one of them, but I didn't play all of those previous games with her. Um, you know, you and just I said one, you definitely played two. Yeah. Well, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Fair enough. I was in the what? season. I was in the season. I was with her on one of those seasons for like, I, like what? A couple of days, but, um, she trusted you. She went home. <laughs> I, I couldn't save her. Anyways, I, I think I think the underdog story that she built, you didn't have to be there to see it. I think she she spoke well enough to say that I've been walked on before and this time I chose to trust my gut. That's why I flipped on Ryan on day or whatever, episode three or whatever that was. It didn't work. And then I kept him out and kicked him out on 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 episode four or whatever. You know what I mean? Or yeah. So you, you can never say that it doesn't have any impact. I just don't think she would have won because of it. Um, I think Ryan lost, like, if you want to go down the list, right? Like there's people who lost because of it, right? Like Corey had a target because he knew people. Ryan had a target because he knew people. Um, Phil had a target partly because he knew people, but also because he was doing really well. Right. Um, you know, so it impacted a lot of people, but I don't know. I wouldn't want to take anything away from Karen and say that, you know, a large portion of why she got the votes was pre-existing relationships. I mean, Annie voted for her. Um, she didn't know Annie. So, yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, for sure. She won the season. She's the winner, but that's why we do these debates. You talk through yeah. these different types of scenarios. Oh, for sure. For sure. And, and I love the drama. And I hope 49% of people out there think that she did win because of it. And 51% don't. And then we can have some sort of rivals going forward with uh, Jeremy versus Karen. And, and this will become a trilogy of some <laughs> sort. It's the Ozzy versus Yule. Who who would have won this time? It was Yule. So yeah, there we go. I think there's going to be a debate amongst people. I've already heard a debate about it. So I, I'm interested to get people's thoughts and opinions at the reunion. Talk yeah. it all through with everyone. But yeah, McKenna, anything else to add? This was a great season. We just want to uber thank our cast and production team once again. We couldn't have done it without you guys. Robbie, thanks for breaking down these episodes. And we will be talking with the final three. Um, you will see them tonight uh, af and after the finale. That's it. <laughs>